When we read chapter four, we learned how important the sycamore tree was to Juliana. And Julie's father um, gave her something to help her remember that magical feeling that the sycamore tree brought her. So type in the chat, what did Juliana's dad give her? This next chap chapter is titled Brock, Brock, Brock. This is chapter five of Flips. And before we start, does anyone own any chickens in here? If you do, type in the chat. Eggs scare me, chickens too. And buddy, you can laugh at that all you want, but I'm dead serious here. It started in the sixth grade with eggs and a snake and the Baker brothers. By the way, we're in Bryce's point of view, so Bryce is telling the story. The Baker brothers' names are Matt and Mike, but even now I can tell you which one's which. I can't tell you which one's which. You never see one without the other. And even though they're not twins, they do look and sound pretty much the same. And they're both in Lynetta's class, so maybe one of them got held back. Although I can't exactly see a teacher voluntarily having either of those maniacs two years in a row. Regardless, Matt and Mike are the ones who taught me that snakes eat eggs. And when I say they eat eggs, I'm talking about eat them raw and shell on whole. I probably would have gotten my entire life, I've gone my entire life without this little bit of reptilian trivia if it hadn't been for Lynetta. Lynetta had this major league thing for Skylar Brown, who lives about three blocks away. And every chance she got, she went down there to hang out while he practiced the drums. Well, boom, boom, whop. What did I care, right? But then Skylar and Julie's brothers formed a band, which they named Mystery Pisser. My mom heard about it. She completely wigged out. What kind of parents would allow their children to be in a band named Mystery Pisser? It's vile. It's disgusting. So do we have any um, people in this class that own any snakes? If so, type in the chat. That's the whole point, Mom, Lynetta tried to explain. It doesn't mean anything. It's just to get a rise out of old people. Are you calling me old, young lady? Because it's certainly getting a rise out of me. Lynetta just shrugged, implying that my room could draw her own conclusion that my mom could draw her own conclusion. Go, go to your room, my mother snapped. For what, Lynetta snapped back. I didn't say anything. You know perfectly well what for. Now you go in there and adjust your attitude, young lady. So Lynetta got another one of her teenage timeouts. And after that, anytime Lynetta was two minutes late coming home for dinner, my mother would messenger, messenger me down to Skylar's house to drag her home. It might have been embarrassing for, for, Lynetta, for Lynetta, but it was worse for me. I was still in elementary school, and the mystery pisser guys were in high school. They were ripe and ragged, raging power uh, cords through the neighborhood, while I looked like I had just gotten back from Sunday school. I'd get so nervous going down there that my voice would squeak when i tell Lynetta it was time for dinner. It literally squeaked. But after a while, the band dropped mystery with, from their name and Pisser and its entourage got used to be to me showing up. And instead of glaring at me, they started saying stuff like, hey, baby brother, come on in. Hey, Bracey boy, want a jam? This, then, is how I wound up in Skylar Brown's garage, surrounded by high school kids, watching a boa constrictor swallow eggs. Since I've already seen it down, a rat in the Baker brothers' bedroom, Pisser had lost at least some of the element of surprise. Plus, I'd picked up on the fact that they'd been saving this little show to freak me out, and I really didn't want to give them the satisfaction. This wasn't easy, though, because watching a snake swallow an egg is actually much creepier than you think. The boa opened its mouth to an enormous size, then just took the egg in and glop! We could see it roll down his throat. But that wasn't all. After the snake had glubbed down three eggs, Matt or Mike said, so Bracey boy, how is he gonna digest those? Has anyone ever witnessed a snake 
eating something before? If so, type in the chat. I shrugged and tried not to speak when I answered, stomach acid? He shook his head and pretended to confide. He needs a tree or a leg. He grinned at me. Want to volunteer yours? I backed away a little bit. I could see the monster try to swallow my leg whole as an after egg chaser. No. He laughed and pointed at the boas slithering across the room. Ah, uh, too bad. He's going the other way. He's going to use the piano instead. A piano? What kind of snake was this? How can my sister stand being in the same room as these dementos? I looked at her, and even though she was pretending to be cool with the snake, I know Lynetta. She was totally creeped out by it. The snake wrapped itself around the piano leg about three times, and then Matt or Mike put its hands up and said, Shh, shh, everyone quiet. Here it goes. The snake stopped moving and then flexed, and as it flexed, we could hear the eggs crunch inside him. Oh, gross, the girls wailed. Whoa, dude, the guys all said. Matt, Mike and Matt smiled at each other real big and said, Dinner is served. I tried to act cool about the snake, but the truth is, I started having bad dreams about the things swallowing eggs, and rats, and cats, and me. Then the real life nightmare began. One morning, about two weeks ago, after the boa show in Skylar's garage, Julie appeared on my doorstep. And what she got in her hands? A half carton of eggs. She bounces around like it's Christmas, saying, Hiya, Bryce. Remember Abby and Bonnie and Clyde and Dexter and Eunice and Florence? I just stared at her. Somehow I remembered Santa's reindeers a little bit different than that. You know, my chickens. The ones I hatched for the science fair last year. Oh, right. How could I forget? So I know some of you have chickens in this class. So what are some of the names of your chickens? How can you make that connection? Go ahead and type in the chat. They're laying eggs. She pushed the carton into my hands. Here, take these. They're for you and your family. Oh, uh, thanks, I said, and closed the door. I used to really like eggs, especially scrambled with bacon or sausage. But even without the little snake incident, I knew that no matter what you did to these eggs, they would taste nothing but foul to me. These eggs came from the chickens that had been the chicks that had hatched from the eggs that had been incubated by Julie Baker for, for our fifth grade science fair. It was classic Julie. She totally dominated the fair. And get this, her project was all about watching eggs. My friend, there is not a lot of action to report on when you're incubating eggs. You've got your light, you've got your container, you've got some shredded newspaper, and that's it, you're done. Julie, though, managed to write an inch-thick report, plus she made diagrams and charts. I'm talking line charts and bar charts and pie charts about the activity of eggs. Eggs! She also managed to time the eggs, so they hatched the night of the fair. How does a person do that? Here, I've got a live-action erupting volcano and that, that I've worked pretty stinking hard on. And all anybody cares about is Julie's chicks pecking out of their shells. I even went over to take a look for myself, and I'm being completely objective here. It was boring. They pecked for about five minutes, then just lay about, just lay there for five minutes. I got to hear Julie jabber away to the judges, too. She had a pointer. Can you believe that? Not a pencil, an actual retractable pointer so she could reach across her incubator and tap on the chart or that diagram as she explained the excitement of watching eggs grow for 21 days. The only thing she couldn't have done to be more overboard was put on a chicken costume and buddy, I'm convinced if she thought of it, she would have done it. But hey, I was over it. It was just Julie being Julie, right? But all of a sudden, there I am a year later holding a carton of homegrown eggs and I'm having a hard time not getting annoyed all over again about her stupid blue ribbon project when my mother leans out from the hallway and says, who was that, honey? What have you got there? Eggs? I could tell by the look on her face that she was hot to scramble. Yeah, I said and handed them to her, but I'm having cereal. 
She opened the carton, then enclosed it with a smile. How nice, she said. Who brought them over? Julie, she grew them. Grew them? Well, her chickens did. Oh, her smile started fa falling as she opened the carton again. Is that so? I didn't know she had chickens. Remember, you and dad spent an hour watching them hatch at last year's science fair? Well, how do we know they're not chicks inside these eggs? I shrugged. Like I said, I'm having cereal. We all had cereal, but what we talked about were eggs. My dad thought they'd be just fine. He had farm fresh eggs when he was a kid and said they were delicious. My mother, though, couldn't get past the idea that she might be cracking open a dead chick, and pretty soon discussion turned to the role of a rooster, something me and my Cheerios could have done without. Finally, Lynetta said, if they had a rooster, don't you think we'd know? Don't you think the whole neighborhood would know? Hmm, well, we all said, good point. But then my mom pipes up with, maybe they got it de -yodeled, you know? Like they debark dogs? A de -yodeled rooster, my dad said? Like it's the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard. Then he looks at my mom and realizes that he'd be way better off going along with her deodled idea than making fun of her. Hmm, he said, I've never heard of such a thing, but maybe so. Lynetta shrugs and says to my mom, so just ask them, why don't you? Call up Mrs. Baker and ask her. Oh, my mom said, well, I hate to call her eggs into question. It doesn't seem very polite now, does it? So what do you guys think of the Baker family? Go ahead and type in the chat. What is the Baker family like? Now, how would you compare the Baker family to Bryce's family? What is Bryce's family like? Just ask Matt or Mike, I said to Lynetta. She scowls at me and hisses, shut up. What, what do I do now? What did I do now? Haven't you noticed I haven't been going down there, you idiot? Lynetta, my mom said, like this is the first time she heard my sister talk to me or something. Well, it's true. How can he not have noticed? I was going to ask you about that, honey. Did something happen? Lynetta stands up and shoves her chair in. Like you care, she snaps and charges down to her room. Oh boy, my dad said. Mom says, excuse me, and follows Lynetta down the hall. When my mother's gone, my dad says, so son, why don't you just ask Julie? Dad, it's just a little question, Bryce, no harm, no foul, but it'll get me a half hour answer. He studies me for a minute, then says, no boy should be this afraid of a girl. I'm not afraid of her. I think you are. Dad, seriously, son, I want you to get us an answer. Conquer your fear and get us an answer to whether or not they have a rooster. That's right. He gets up and clears his cereal bowl saying, I've got to get to work and you've got to get to go. You've got to get to school. I'll expect a report tonight. Great, just great. The day was doomed before it had started. But then at school, when I told Garrett about what had happened, he just shrugged and said, well, she lives right across the street from you, right? Yeah, so? So you could just look over her fence. You mean spy? Sure, but how can I tell if one of them's a rooster or not? Roosters are, I don't know, bigger, and they have more feathers. Feathers? Like, I've got to go and count feathers? No, stupid. My mom said that the male's always brighter. Then he laughs and says, although in your case, I'm not so sure. Thanks. You are giving me big time help here, buddy. I really appreciate it. Look, a rooster's going to be bigger and have brighter feathers. You know, those long ones in the back. They're redder or blacker or whatever. And don't roosters have some rubbery red stuff growing off the top of their head? And some off their neck, too. Yeah, the rooster's got all sorts of rubbery red stuff all around its face. So you're saying I'm supposed to look 
over the fence for big feathers and rubbery red stuff? Well, come to think of it, chickens have that rubbery red stuff too, just not as much of it. I rolled my eyes at him and was about to say, forget it, I'll just ask Julie. But then he says, I'll come with you if you want, seriously. Yeah, dude, seriously. And that, my friend, is how I wound up spying over the baker's fence with Garrett Anderson at 3.30 that afternoon. Not my choice of covert operations, but a necessary one in order to report back to my dad that night at dinner. We got there fast, too. The bell rang, and we basically charged off campus because I figured if we got to the baker's quick enough, we could look and leave before Julie was anywhere near her house. We didn't even drop off our backpacks. We went straight down the alley and started spying. It's not really necessary to look over the baker's fence. You can see almost as well looking through it, but Garrett kept sticking his head up, so I figured I should too. Although in the back of my mind, I was aware that Garrett didn't have to live in this neighborhood, and I did. The backyard was a mess. Big surprise. The bushes were out of control. There were some kind of hodgepodge wooden wire coop off to one side, and the yard wasn't grass. It was highly fertilized dirt. Garrett was the first to notice their dog, sacked out on the patio between two sorry-looking folding chairs. He points and, and says, you think he's going to give us any trouble? We're not going to be here long enough to get in trouble. Where are those stupid chickens? Probably in the coop, he says, then picks up a rock and throws it at the mess of plywood and chicken wire. At first, all we hear is a bunch of feathers flapping, but then one of the birds comes fluttering out. Not very far, but enough so we could see it's got feathers and rubbery red stuff. So, I ask him, is that a rooster? He shrugs. Looks like a chicken to me. How can you tell? He shrugs again. Just does. We watch it scratching at the dirt for a minute, and then I ask, what's a hen anyway? So what does everyone think of Bryce and Garrett's plan, their covert operation? Do you think what they're doing is a good idea? And do you have a better suggestion? Type in the chat. A hen? Yeah, you got roosters, you got chickens, and then there's hens. What's a hen? It's one of those, he says, pointing into the baker's backyard. Then what's a chicken? He looks at me like I'm crazy. What are you talking about? Chickens? What's a chicken? He takes a step back from me and says, Bracey boy, you're losing it. That's a chicken. He stoops down to pick up another rock. And he's just about to let it fly when the sliding glass door to the back patio opens up and Julie steps out. We both duck. And as we're checking out through the fence, I say, when did she get home? Garrett grumbles. Well, you were losing it about chickens. Then he whispers, but hey, this will work great. She's got a basket, right? She's probably coming out to collect eggs. First, she had to get all mushy with that a mangy mud of hers. She got down and nuzzled and ruffled and patted and hugged, telling him what a good boy he was. And when she finally let him go back to sleep, she had to stop and coo at the bird Garrett had scared out. And then she started singing. Singing at the top of her lungs, she goes, I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way, my girls? Talking about my girls. She looks inside the coop and coos. Hello, Flo. Good afternoon, Bonnie. Come on out, pumpkin. The coop wasn't big enough for her to walk in. It was more like a mini lean-to shack that even her dog would have trouble crawling in. Does that stop Julie Baker? No. She gets down on her hands and knees and dives right in. Chickens come squawking and flapping, and pretty soon the yard's full of birds, and all we can see of Julie is her poop-covered shoes. That's not all we can hear, though. She's warbling inside the coop, going, I don't need money, no fortune, and fame. 
I got all the riches, baby, anyone can claim. Well, I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? My girls, talking about my girls, my girl. At this point, I wasn't checking the chickens out for rubbery red stuff or feathers. I was looking at the bottom of Julie Baker's feet, wondering how in the world a person could be so happy tunneling through a dilapidated chicken coop with poop stuck all over her shoes. That's a great vocabulary word, dilapidated. How would you describe or define the word dilapidated? What does dilapidated mean? Garrett got me back on track. They're all chickens, he said, look at them. I quit checking out Julie's shoes and start checking out birds. The first thing I did was count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, all counted for. After all, how could anyone forget she hatched six? It was the all time school record. Everyone in the country had heard about that. But I was not really sure how to ask Garrett about what he had said. Yeah, they're all chickens, but what did that mean? I sure didn't want him coming down on me again, but it still didn't make sense. Finally, I asked him, you mean there's no rooster? Correctamundo. How can you tell? He shrugged. Roosters strut. Strut. That's right. And look, none of them have long feathers or very much of that rubbery red stuff, he nodded. Yeah, they're definitely all chickens. That night, my father got right to the point. So, son, mission accomplished? He asked as he stabbed into a mountain of fettuccine and whirled his fork around. I attacked my noodles, too, and gave him a smile. Uh-huh, I said as I sat up tall to deliver the news. They're all chickens. The turning of his fork came into a grinding halt. And? I could tell something was wrong, but I didn't know what. I tried to keep this smile plastered on my face as I said, and what? He rested his fork and stared at me. Is that what she said? They're all chickens? Uh, not exactly. Then exactly what did she say? Uh, she didn't exactly say anything. Meaning? Meaning I went over there and took a look for myself. I tried very hard to sound like this was a major accomplishment, but he wasn't buying it. You didn't ask her? I didn't have to. Garrett knows a lot about chickens and we went over there and found out for ourselves. Lynetta came back from rinsing the Romano sauce off her seven and a half noodles, then reached for the salt and scowled at me saying, you're the chicken. Lynetta, my mother said, be nice. Lynetta stopped shaking the salt. Mother, he spied, you get it? He went over there and looked over her fence. Are you saying you're okay with that? My mom turned to me. Bryce, is that true? Everyone was staring at me now and I felt like I had to save face. What's the big deal? You told me to find out about her chickens, and I found out about her chickens. Brock, 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 my sister whispered. My father still wasn't eating. And what you found out, he said, like he was measuring every word, was that they're all chickens? Right. He sighed and then took that bite of noodles and chewed it for the longest time. It felt like I was sinking fast, but I couldn't figure out why. So I tried to bail out with, are you guys? And you guys can go ahead and eat those eggs, but there's no way I'm gonna touch them. So don't even ask. My mother's looking back and forth from my dad to me while she eats her salad. And I can tell she's waiting for him to address my adventure as a neighborhood operative. But since he's saying nothing, he's not saying anything, she clears her throat and says, why is that? Because there's, we're, well, there's, I don't know how to say this nicely. Just say it, my father snaps. Well, there's, you know, excrement everywhere. Oh, gross, my sister says, throwing her fork down. You mean chicken droppings, my mother asks. Yeah, there's not even a lawn. It's all dirt and, uh, you know, chicken turds. The chickens walk in and peck through it and... Oh, gross, Lynetta, Lynetta wails. Well, it's true. Lynetta stands up and says, you expect me to eat after this? And stalks out of the room. 
Lynetta, you have to eat something, my mother calls after her. No, I don't, she shouts back. Then a second later, she sticks her head into the dining room and says, and don't expect me to eat any of those eggs either, mother. Does the word salmonella mean anything to you? Lynetta takes off, takes off down the hall and mother says, salmonella? She turns to my father. Do you suppose they could have salmonella? I don't know, Patsy. I'm more concerned that our son is a coward. A coward? Rick, please, Bryce is no such thing. He's a wonderful child who's, who's afraid of a girl. Dad, I'm not afraid of her. She just bugs me. Why? You know why. She bugs you too. She's over the top about everything. Bryce, I asked you to conquer your fear, but all you did was give in to it. If you were in love with her, that would be one thing. Love is something to be afraid of. But this, this is embarrassing. So she talks too much. So she's too enthused about every little thing. So what? Get in, get your question answered, and get out. Stand up to her for crying out loud. Rick, my mom was saying. Rick, calm down. He did find out what you asked him to. No, he didn't. Well, what do you mean? He tells me they're all chickens. Of course they're all chickens. The question is how many are hens and how many are roosters? I could almost hear the click in my brain and man, I felt like a complete doofus. No wonder he was disgusted at me. I was an idiot. They were all chickens, duh. Garrett acted like he was some expert on chickens and he didn't know diddly squat. Why had I listened to him? But it was too late. My dad was convinced I was a coward. And to get me over it, he decided that what I should do was take the carton of eggs back to the bakers and tell them we didn't eat eggs or that we were allergic to them or something. Then my mom butts in with, what are you teaching him, Rick? None of that is true. If he returns them, shouldn't he tell them the truth? What, that we're afraid of salmonella poisoning? Me? Aren't you a little concerned too? Patsy, that's not the point. The point is, I will not have a coward for a son. But teaching him to lie? Fine, then just throw them away. But from now on, I expect you to look that little tiger square in the eye, you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay then. So what do you think about um, the Lasky's solution um, the dad and mom solution to the eggs. Do you think they should throw them out? Do you think they should return them? What do you think they should do in this situation? I was off the hook for about all of eight days. Then there she was again at seven in the morning, bouncing up and down on my porch with eggs in her hand. Hi, Brace. Here you go. I tried to look her square in the eye and tell her, no, thanks. But she was so darn happy, I wasn't really awake enough to tackle a tiger. She wound up pushing another carton into my hands, and I wound up ditching them in the kitchen trash before my father sat down to breakfast. This went on for two years. Two years! And I got to the point where it was just part of my morning routine. I'd be on the lookout for Julie so I could whip the door open before she had a chance to knock or ring the bell. And then I'd bury the eggs in the trash before my dad showed up. Then came the day I blew it. Jewel had actually been making herself pretty scarce because it was around the time they'd taken the sycamore tree down. But suddenly, one morning, she was back at our doorstep delivering eggs. I took them as usual, and I went to chuck them as usual. But the kitchen trash was so full that there wasn't any room for the carton, so I put it on top picked up the trash, and beat it out the front door to empty everything in the garbage can outside. Well, guess who was standing there like a statue on my porch? The egg chick. I about spilled the trash all over the porch. What are you still doing here? I asked her. I, I don't know. I was just thinking. About what? I was desperate. I needed a distraction. Some way around her with this garbage before she noticed what was sitting right on top. She looked away like she was embarrassed. Julie Baker embarrassed? I didn't think it was possible. Then, so whatever, the golden opportunity to whip a soggy magazine 
over the egg carton had presented itself, and buddy, I took it. Then I tried to make a fast break for the garbage can in the side yard, only she body knocked me. She body blocked me. Seriously, she stepped right in my way and put her arms out like she was guarding the goal. She chased me and blocked me again. What happened, she wanted to know. Did they break? Perfect. Why hadn't I thought of that? Yeah, Julie, I told her, and I'm really sorry about that. But what I'm thinking is, please, God, oh, please, God, let me make it to the garbage can. God must have been sleeping in. Julie tackled the trash and pulled out her precious little carton of eggs, and she could tell right off that they weren't broken. They weren't even cracked. She stood frozen with the eggs in her hands while I dumped the rest of the trash. Why did you throw them out, she asked, but her voice didn't sound like Julie Baker's voice. It was quiet and shaky. So I told her we were afraid of salmonella poisoning because her yard was a mess and that we were just trying to spare her feelings. I told her it was like we were right. I told her like we were right and she was wrong, but I felt like a jerk, a complete cluck faced jerk. Then she tells me that a couple of neighbors have been buying eggs off her, buying them. And while I'm coming to grips with this incredible bit of news, she whips out her mental calculator. Do you realize I've lost over a hundred dollars giving these eggs to you? Then she races across the street in a flood of tears. As much as I tried to tell myself that I hadn't asked her for the eggs, I hadn't said we wanted them or needed them or liked them. The fact was, I've never seen Julie cry before. Now, when she's broken her, not when she'd broken her arm in PE, not when she'd been teased at school or ditched by her brothers, not even when they cut down the sycamore tree. I'm pretty sure she cried then, but I didn't actually see it. To me, Julie Baker has always been too tough to cry. I went down to my room to pack my stuff for school, feeling the, like the biggest jerk to ever hit the planet. I've been sneaking around throwing out eggs for over two years, avoiding her, avoiding my father. What did that make me? Why hadn't I just stood up and said, no thanks, don't want them, don't eat them, don't like them. Give them to the snake, why don't you? Something. Was I really afraid of hurting her feelings? Or was I afraid of her? What do you think the question, what do you think the answer to Bryce's question is? So he's questioning himself. Do you think he was afraid of hurting her feelings or was he actually afraid of her? Go ahead and type in the chat.